Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Pehebhacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare This uh, period we're in is uh, called World Sankirtan Week, or Holy Name Week. And um, this is a event that is a, a sponsored every year by the International Society for Krishna Consciousness with emphasis on kirtan and chanting the holy names. So in pursuance of that particular program, I'm going to continue to uh, turn the nectar of the glories of Harinam Sankirtan. And this verse here is from the 14th chapter of the 8th canto. Halayanti Prajapala Yavanantam Vibhaga Saha Yagya Bhaga Bhujo Deva Ye Chaitantran Vitas Chatai To enjoy the results of sacrifices, yagyas, the rulers of the world, namely the sons and grandsons of Manu, discharge the orders of the Supreme Personality of Godhead until the end of Manu's reign. The demigods also share the results of these sacrifices. Hmm. Srila Prabhupada's very short purport. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 4.2, Evam Parampara Praptam Imam Rajasayo Vidu. This supreme science was thus received through the chain of the Siddhic succession, and the saintly kings understood it in this way. This Parampara system extends from Manu to his flaku, from his flaku to his sons and grandsons. The rules of the world in the line of hierarchy, hierarchy, yeah, hierarchy, execute the order of the supreme personality of Godhead in the parampara system. Anyone interested in peaceful life must participate in this parampara system to perform yagyas. As Gaudi of Vaishnavas in the parampara system, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we must perform sacratan yagya all over the world. Yagnai Sankantana Prayaya Jati Hi Sumeva Saha. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in this age of Kali, and he will be easily satisfied if the Sankirtan movement is spread vigorously all over the world. This will also make people happy without a doubt. So here we do, we're speaking, as it says in the translation, yagya. Yagya is the uh, performance of activities meant for, to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is actually the, the term yagya. So, but there are recommended yagyas in the Vedas various types of sacrifices. There's Asvamedha Yagya, there's uh, Bhu Yagya, there are uh, Gomeda Yagyas. And of course, we have Sankirtan Yagya. So Yagya has to be performed in order to worship the Lord. But in each age, a particular emphasis is given to a particular type of Yagya. So the yagyas in the previous age, such as Go Yagya and uh, Asvamedha Yagya, are not able to be performed in this age. Only great kings who had tremendous amounts of wealth could perform these yagyas. And it had to be done according to the Brahminical uh, direction given in the Shastras. Not only the yagyas, but it has to be done in a particular way. And of course, mm, um, 
to accept Krishna Prashadam is called um, Prashadam Yogya. It means accepting only those things which are offered to Krishna in devotion as one's foodstuff. That's the type of Yogya also. So that is also done in this age. But here, Yogya is mentioned here. Yajnai Sankirtana Prayaya Jantihi Sumeda Saha. The entire verse is Krishna Varnam, Tusa Krishna, Sangopanga Saparshadam, Yajnai Sankirtana Prayaya Jantihi Sumeda Saha. So the word um, Yajna is connected with Sankirtan. And Sankirtan means congregational glorification of the Lord. So Srila Prabhupada spread the whole Krishna conscious movement based on this Sankirtan Yajna. We see as the, uh, as the movement unfolded in the early days of the Krishna conscious movement, um, Prabhupada was in New York with a few sort of ragtag, ragtag type of disciples, persons who are just coming off the streets, didn't know much about spirituality, or if they did, what they knew was wrong. <laughs> so um, Prabhupada um, was dealing with people who had no real understanding of spiritual life, but he understood that Lord Chaitanya is very merciful. And so he has given a formula that is easily applicable for the entire world. And that is congregational glorification of the Lord by chanting his holy name. Now, Prabhupada did something that wasn't normally done so much in the past, but was during the time, done during the time of Lord Chaitanya. It was done in a big way during the time of Lord Chaitanya as a protest when the devotees were doing Harinam Sankirtan in uh, their local areas within the villages. Uh, people were complaining. People were complaining, uh, saying it makes too much noise. They were using that word. And um, it's not the way to worship the Lord. The Lord is not worshiped like that. So they're making up some spiritual process which is not authorized. And so as the complaint came back to the Kazi and the Kazi came with his men and threatened the devotees that if they don't stop, he was gonna take action. But mm, devotees continued and then the constables, the soldiers came, and this time they, they uh, broke the drums and were chasing after the devotees who ran away. <laughs> so uh, we can see the disturbances that were given towards the devotees by these uh, rulers at that time. We have the same problem today in many places around the world. It's uh, Sankirtan is not so much appreciated. Prabhupada was very livid in with, with anger. He was completely angry in one particular situation where as they were establishing the um, Radha Rasa Bihari temple in Juhu Beach, in Bombay, Mumbai, um, the devotees were having, obviously were having kirtan. So one of the leading constables, he was actually the, the municipal chief. He uh, wrote and then complained that Sankirtan is a nuisance. He used that word nuisance. And Prabhupada was really, really <laughs> angry. He was saying, you know, this, he could have spoken in a different way that maybe some people would not like that. 
that activity we perform, but he called it a nuisance. Glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead was labeled by some of the leading politicians, administrators, as a nuisance. And Prabhupada went right after him <laughs> in letters and in full force with other to uh, curtail him and make him uh, give a written apology for what he had said. So um, you'll see, you know, this Sankirtan movement has been always been a threat to the gross materialists and they find different ways to uh, check it. But it cannot be checked because it's, it's ordained by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. So when Mahaprabhu had heard that the devotees were being harassed for performing Sankirtan, he became like Yamaraj, or actually he became like Lord Vishringadev. <laughs> and he called for mass Harinam Sankirtan through the streets of Navadweep, marching towards the house of the Chankazi as a protest. And uh, because Lord Chaitanya was so powerful, he was able to bring together more than million, millions of people to engage in the Harinam Sankirtan. I, I think about the beginning of this year, I did a series of classes uh, centered around that particular Leela of Lord Chaitanya. And we went into real detail discussing this Leela. But here, we see that this Sankirtan movement, as Prabhupada said, must be spread vigorously all over the world. And if we do, it will make the world happy and it will also uh, satisfy everyone. <laughs> it will satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead and when the Lord is satisfied, um, then there is nothing else to, to aspire for. If one performs activities that become satisfying to the Lord, then one's life in devotional service has reached success. But here, particularly, this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So we are in a particular time period where it's recommended devotees get out and do Sankirtan in the streets. Um, we were, we're doing that in uh, Slovenia regularly, sometimes twice a day going out and accompanying the Sankirtan is book distribution also. So it's a great way mm, to en enliven the devotees. It's a great way to uh, please Lord Chaitanya and it's a great way to purify the world of its sinful atmosphere wherever the holy name is resounded chanted with enthusiasm and in, in groups of devotees that whole atmosphere becomes transformed into something very powerfully spiritual so this is uh, Prabhupada I was just listening yesterday Srila Prabhupada was describing in one lecture that you know there are so many problems in Kali Yuga and you can expect that. In fact, I was listening to it this morning, and now I remember. And he said, you know, people have different solutions that they have come up with in order to check and to solve the problems of the world. But he said, you can't do that. This is Kali Yuga. He says, Kali Yuga will go on with so many difficulties. It will continue to be difficult. There's no question about it. But he says there is one solution, only one. He made it exclusive. And when we do Harinam Sankirtan, we can change the whole atmosphere of the world and bring in the mercy of the Lord in a very, very complete way, which will purify people and the atmosphere itself. So Prabhupada's emphasis and we see also in our own example, I have that uh, 
story that I tell sometimes in my own personal experience when I was preaching in one city in America, Cincinnati, Ohio. This was back in the year 1989, I think it was. Let me see. No, it was a little later than that, 19, 1992 or 93, I think it was. There had been a, uh, a very devastating drought in one area of the country where we had our temple. And uh, this is the uh, Midwest. The Midwest is considered to be the farm belt where all the farmers, and so there was no rain and we were in the month of July. It hadn't rained in June or even May, which is unusual. And uh, so there was a scarcity of water and the uh, society leaders were restricting people's use of water with penalties of uh, punishment. If one unnecessarily breaks these restrictions, you couldn't water your lawns and your house, you couldn't wash your car. Um, any kind of indication that people were wasting water would be uh, punishable with a fine. And even if it was ser considered serious enough, it was also uh, greater forms of punishment. So um, we were preaching and I was there and uh, we had gotten on one radio show and the radio show was a, a disc jockey who was at the same time a lawyer who was doing our, our financial accounts for our temple. So he invited us to come on his radio show, which was a three hour show every day from 9 a.m. to noon, where we could uh, talk about Krishna consciousness. So he invited me to come on, I came on alone and I was there and uh, he liked it. He was interviewing, ask, asking me different questions, mostly about the history of our movement and what do we believe in. And then uh, that show ended. But then later on, when the drought came on, he invited me and many of the leaders from the New Vrindavan community to also attend for a bigger meeting on his radio show. Now his show had 38,000, I'm sorry, uh, 38 states. There were 38 states of, in the United States of America that this broadcast was given. So there were millions and millions of people who had, who could uh, access this radio station. It was very, very popular, it was a talk show. It was given high ratings. So we were on along with the leaders from New Vrindavan, and this is the time of the drought. So during the question and answer session, he asked us, can we make it rain? And of course, uh, you know, I think he was just joking a little bit, but we said, yeah. And when we answered, yeah, he didn't expect that. Uh, he was shocked and started to respond by saying that, you know, you're going to be seen as false prophets. No, we said, no, we can make it rain. He said, how? Well, by chanting Hare Krishna. Really? Yeah. So we explained that you have so many listeners listening to the show today. So we're going to chant Hare Krishna. And we're going to ask all the listeners who are out there to chant with us. And collectively, we will get some rain. So he got really convinced and started to become interested in, you know, putting it all together. And so he was very, what we say, uh, uh, encouraging to the entire audience, trying to bring them into the kirtan. And then we began chanting a kirtan over the radio. And at the same time, he was encouraging the audience to chant with us. So this went on for about oh, a couple minutes. We were chanting, and then it stopped. And that, and then uh, that was about nine thirty in the morning when the show had just begun. Um, so eleven thirty, we were still there, and then there was some report coming in from uh, 
from uh, the rate, the, the, what they call the roving weather reporters. They ride around in their cars looking at the sky and trying to de determine whether what is going to be the forecast. Anyway, this report came in and there were some clouds that were coming over about 50 miles away from where we were. So that report came in and the show ended. And 2.30 that day, after the show had ended, it started to rain and it rained for three consecutive days. <laughs> and so everyone was really happy that the rain came. And so it was understood that the Hare Krishnas made it rain. And we went, we were given an award by the city of Cincinnati, our disc jockey friend, he uh, decided to report what happened to the city officials. And they were so pleased that they awarded us the key of the city, which is considered to be an honorable award coming from someone who does something outstanding. And so uh, now this is this example is not an example we follow as a principle. It was an emergency and it was a good opportunity to get people to chant Hare Krishna. That was our whole thing. Generally, we don't use the holy name, not generally, we don't use the holy name in the service of mankind in order to get some material result. But in this case, we thought it would be good in order to bring about uh, millions and millions of people to chant Hare Krishna with us. And um, we became a little more popular because of that in a favorable way. So this Sankirtan movement is very powerful because it's Lord Chaitanya's movement directly. He performed it, he introduced it, and he developed it. And uh, this, uh, so you want to take advantage of these uh, special time periods that are given to us as an opportunity to bring devotees together and get out and start doing Harinam Sankirtan in the streets. Uh, why should we be fearful? There's nothing to fear. If we do it in an organized way, following the rules of the city officials, we can do it nicely and people will appreciate. In fact, um, sometimes when I used to go to classes in various places, people would ask, well, we used to see you all the time in the streets chanting. We don't see you anymore. Yeah, a lot of times we, uh, we somehow or other got away from that, but that was a mistake. But now we understand clearly that it's important as a way to bring uh, peace in the world and purify the atmosphere of all of its sinful reactions. So this Harinam Sankirtan, Krishna's name is Krishna, Kali Kale Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar. Krishna has incarnated in the sound of his name. His name is non-different than him. The, all Nijasarva Shaktis, all the energies, all the forms, all the pastimes, all the qualities, all the names are found in the name of Krishna. Krishna's name is the topmost expression of devotional activity. So when we engage in chanting Krishna's holy name, we can be assured that our spiritual life will be good, strong. And so Harinam Sankirtan is uh, the means for strengthening our movement and uh, pushing back the effects of Kali Yuga. There's no way to push the back the effects of Kali Yuga. The plan makers, the leaders in the world who have some good intentions about trying to recreate a more peaceful society will only fail. Kali Yuga is a very difficult age. People are not very enlightened, either materially or spiritually. When I say materially, whatever they do materially causes so many problems. <laughs> and at the same time, they continue to do it in the same way. And just like, you know, 
in order to proof, in order to make computers, you need oil. One of the ingredients for the for the framework of the computer is oil, and oil is you know coming from the earth. So they have to get more and more oil, and exploit the earth in order to make these machines. And a lot of mostly all machines run on oil too. So. So everything they do in this age always has a negative effect along with whatever apparent positive results they get. Of course, that is, that is individual. Uh, but when we perform Harinam Sankirtan, everything becomes wonderful. Okay, so I'll stop there. Any questions or comments? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Really, really nice. Especially this radio session, like that's really, really interesting. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for highlighting, sharing that. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. If you have any questions, comments, or realization, please unmute yourself or you can type in chat window. Hare Krishna. So Hare, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, I have one question, uh, Guru Maharaj. So it's mentioned that Hare, this uh, chanting should not be used for any material gain or material purpose. But if we chant uh, for anybody, like even not pure devotee, but anybody, better health, is that okay, Guru Maharaj? Or that's also not considered? Uh, that's fine. But you have to accompany that chanting with a prayer saying, my dear Lord, if you so desire, please cure the person that you are directing it towards. In other words, you don't, you know, you don't order Krishna or try to bribe Krishna. You, Prabhupada gave us that instruction twice when he was sick and when devotees were doing kirtan the Prabhupada said you should accompany the kirtan with the prayers that my dear lord if you so desire please cure our spiritual master so that should be there also because you don't know sometimes a person is put into a difficult situation in order to purify them which will help them move forward in spiritual life why do people find themselves in difficult situations? Well, for different reasons, obviously. But for devotees, devotees can take, and many times do, use difficult situations in order to progress in devotional life. The health is one of them also. So, yeah, make your prayer and engage, and then offer the results of your chanting as a offering to the person you are concerned about. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. I think that's uh, this particular thing might be useful for everything, whatever, even if materially we are asking, we should not ask, but even in this situation, that if Lord you desire so, then please do. I think that yeah. line is going to be very powerful. Yeah. We're not in a position to tell what to tell Krishna what to do. <laughs> We're in a position to offer uh, our sincere prayers and opinions. We can request Krishna based on what we want, but it's a request and not a demand. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. It's very, very, very important learnings and very important lesson. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada. 
Uh, I have to tell that uh, devotees in Slovenia miss you to join in this Harinam Sarkitan very much. And uh, when they, uh, they return home, they looking at your window and they missed, they want the window open and Maha come. <laughs> <laughs> and they always ask me when will Guru Maharaj return and join us and, and, <laughs> waiting, for, and waiting for your Maha <laughs> calling tell, from tell your him, window. Tell them to keep doing Sankirtan. <laughs> you tell uh, them Krishna. to keep, their, do, keep doing Sankirtan and eventually I'll get there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Uh, <laughs> that's a that's a Ljubljana pastime. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, you can please unmute yourself. Okay, it doesn't seem to be any more questions. I think for UK devotees, Guru Maharaj uh, just wanted to inform that this initiation ceremony is tomorrow because in US, Radhasmi is tomorrow, but in UK, we are having on Tuesday. So I, we were thinking that initiation ceremony is going to be on Tuesday. So in case if any confusion. Uh, Radhasmi is on the 14th in the UK? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay. So it's one day out. Okay, nice. And there's who's doing initiations? No, Lavanya Mataji initiation tomorrow, Guru Maharaj. Like that. Well, that's in, that's in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there will be link. So, like direct link, people can watch. All devotees can watch. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's tomorrow at eight a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's one o'clock UK time and two o'clock European time. Yeah. Correct. Well, let's see. It's um, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is 1 o'clock UK time, right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. No, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm wrong. I'm, it's not Eastern Standard Time. It's Central, Central Time. Yeah, Central Time. Then it's going to be 2 o'clock UK time. Six hours difference. Yeah, two, yeah, it's, yeah it's Central Time. Not, yeah, 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 you are in Chicago. Yeah, it's Central yeah. Time. So 2 o'clock UK time, 8 o'clock Chicago Central Time, and 3 o'clock European Time. Okay, good. 6.30 p.m. India Time. Oh, and makes it makes it good everywhere. Okay, we'll see you um, tomorrow morning. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Anand Koti Vaishnav Brind ki jai. Yeah. Uh, get, prepare yourself for Radhastami by reading a lot and hearing a lot about Radharani. In South London, Guru Maharaj, we are having five hours program. So lots of Harinam, lots of Kirtan. Good. That's, that's our movement. 
Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Guru Dev. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.